the final lecture. Today we have the final lecture by Dr. Shiva Shakti Maniwasagan. Uh, she will be talking on uh, patents, how to go about it, and to introduce, to, uh, to start the session and to introduce the speaker and the moderator, we, I call upon Dr. Madana Madhubala, Professor, Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, SRM Dental College. Over to you, Madana. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. Again, I welcome all the beloved faculties and friends to the last day of the FDP program. And today's session will be, we'll be having one lecture followed by panel discussion. The first lecture is on the topic, Intellectual Property Rights, the Need and Scope in Postgraduate Training by Dr. Shiva Shakti. I warmly welcome Dr. Sadina, Professor, Kalinga Institute of Dental Sciences to moderate this session. To introduce about the uh, speaker today, Dr. Shiva Shakti, who is a good friend of mine. She is the Deputy Director, Institute of Health Profession Education and Coordinated Dental Education Unit and Professor, Department of Prosthodontics, Indira Gandhi Institute of Dental Sciences, Sri Balaji Vidyapi University, Pondicherry. She is qualified in the field of education with postgraduate diploma and PhD in health profession education. She was endowed with Sri Gurucharan Das Endowment Medal for the best PhD scholar. She is a member of the um, Association of Medical Education in Europe and American Dental Education Association also. And she is a key contributor towards the conversion of all non-regulatory programs of Sri Balaji Vidyapeth University to adapt to a choice-based credited system. To her credit, she has one gra granted patent, eight published patents, and 29 copyrights granted to her credit. She has 40 international publications and has contributed five training manuals on palliative care. And she is very well known for conducting several workshops on educational science and technology, and intellectual property rights for medical, dental, and allied health academicians at international and national level. And her key areas of expertise and consultancy include health professional education, choice-based credit system, national education policy, and intellectual property rights. With this great introduction, I give on to Dr. Shiva Shakti to preside over the forum. Thank you. Uh, uh, great thanks to Dr. Mahalakshmi ma'am, Dr. Madhana, and the entire team of SRM with IACDE for giving me this opportunity. Uh, let me share my screen. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the topic for today is on uh, intellectual property rights. Uh, actually, this is a very broad topic. So I have uh, condensed it as much as I could so that I could uh, give you some salient points within this 45 minute session. So we'll be discussing about the need and scope of this IPR and the postgraduate training. Okay, uh, can I have some response from the audience? Uh, anybody has watched uh, any of these films? Can you tell me what is it about? Uh, I request Dr. Srijana, if there are any responses, please let me know. Since I've shared my screen, I will not be able to see the chat box. I'm no responses, ma'am. Okay, fine. So uh, these are actually uh, English movies, this flash of genius and joy. All these films are based on, uh, uh, I think we have got one. Joy is about the inventor of magic mob. Thank you, Dr. Saloni. I was able to see the Q&A, thank you. Uh, yes, <clears throat> it is about a mob. Like why I have uh, given these two is, it is how powerful is our, uh, uh, IPR because it's a separate world and there are a lot of fights that are going on here because it is a millionaire uh, language. That's what we need to say. Okay. 
find this floating control. Fine. So the objective of today's session would be at the end of 45 minutes, you will be able to analyze why we need IPR uh, as an academician or as a practitioner or whatever. And you will be able to know what are the different types of intellectual property rights. Because uh, generally, if anybody talks about IPR, it will be only about patent. And the scope of intellectual property rights. And also, you can decide as academician on how to implement this IPR in the PhD curriculum. OK. Can you identify this? Does it look similar to any of your uh, separator? Uh, anything else, ma'am? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's actually like the rubber dam clamps, the original uh, dental clamps that were in the beginning, which are actually part of the uh, IPR. Fine. Uh, what comes to your mind when you see this? Is there a time when these two people were on the news on a different note? I request response from the audience, please. Anyone remembers about uh, when these two people fought amongst each other? No. Okay. They fought over a copyright of a music album. What comes to your mind when you first see this? Hello? Response from audience, please, please text. Kanji Puram Sari. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for saving. Yeah. Kanji Puram yeah. Sari. Uh, anything, uh, I think because at least uh, if any one of you are there in the panel can give me no audience are telling. Uh, can you identify this? Coke bottle. Coca Cola bottle. Yes, ma'am. This one? Uh, Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks. So all these are actually intellectual property rights. It's not alone the patents. We have several types of intellectual property rights, which includes patents, copyright, geographical indicator, design and trademark. Geographical indicator in the sense that particular area is very popular for manufacturing that sort of a product. So it comes with a brand value with like how you told like as Kanji Brahm said, like that. And the uh, copyright is the other issue. I'll, I'll take you back to the next, uh, explain you everything in detail. So what comprises of the patent or what are the things that you can actually get it patented? Before that, we need to know for a patent to happen, it should be novel. Novel in the sense, like how you do a literature search before starting your research, like what is the existing knowledge about the topic and what is the new thing that you're going to do. Similarly, when you do such a research, there should not be anything similar to that. That is what is actually novelty. That is why when you try to patent something after your presentation or your publication, it is not considered as novel. And the second most important step is inventiveness. For example, most of the time, uh, we may not be discovering something new, inventing something new. But what we'll be doing is like, for example, we have the uh, handpiece. Every time there is a new patent that is coming up with the handpiece. But what are they claiming for us? What is that inventive step they have done in the existing handpiece, which is making it different from the uh, prior art? And how is it going to be beneficial for the society? So all these things actually form an important part of the proposal writing that is called as the claims. These claims have to be properly written if we want a patent to be uh, got, received. So the inventiveness is a step. Again, it should be extremely novel. And keep it in mind, you will be getting that patent only for that step of invention 
not the entire product because handpiece is an already existing device but only if you are going to add a, a fiber optic thing there and you had applied for that then that becomes i'm not telling it is already there as fiber optic i'm just giving you an example of what an inventive step means and then the third thing is we need it to be an industrial uh, applicability why do we want this industrial applicability because this is like an asset it is a property it is a product which can be sold and you can make money out of it so and also you need to remember after you file your patent and you get your patent granted you have to pay money for the ip office every year for renewal of your patent so it has to go for market and you will be you should be able to sell the product so that is why they also check for the industrial applicability just like that a theory or a principle cannot be patented and most importantly it should not attract the provisions of section 3 and 4 of the patent act 1970 see the patent is as such is the protection given by the government for our uh, property just like how you own a land or a house or whatever it is similarly this is given for your intellectual property and what happens here is what is the section 3 and 4 in patent act is you cannot patent anything that is related to a uh, curative procedure or health related procedure for a patient or an animal or something uh, that is going to restore the uh, human uh, human not even human the nature as such and you cannot patent anything that is related to agriculture or horticulture especially in the developing countries see the patent act uh, rules and regulations can modify between the nations and uh, they will have their own rules depending upon how well developed they are and also because you are once this is patented nobody else can use it so that is why keeping the public demand in mind and how it is going to be useful for everyone then only the patent office will give us the patent and you cannot go and uh, apply for a patent wherein like uh, you have a fixed uh, uh, what do you say um, or uh, like okay if we have a just like a dustbin okay that is the uh, original uh, patented already patented one and you have a trolley which is moving just because you keep the dustbin in the trolley and you are telling that you are going to have uh, uh, made a movable uh, this thing dustbin then it, it cannot be patented because mere joining of two already well known items cannot be patented that also cannot be done and except for certain microorganisms you cannot go in for uh, patenting any of the new living thing any living thing except for very few microorganisms they have a separate clause for that and also uh, we need to understand that uh, i told you about the medical uh, procedures as a, like some of you might have one of the especially the surgeons will have their own approach for a particular type of surgery those things cannot be patented but if they are going to devise an instrument most of the time we dentists modify our equipments to suit our own purpose so those modifications if you are going to do in your instrument such things actually can be patented okay if you have uh, any doubts in this area like which can be patented or which cannot be patented in a specific question i'll take up in the end okay how does this process takes place is first you will be getting an idea usually the idea will be generated by the problem we face in our uh, day to day uh, affairs and then when you know that okay i am going to why can't i work on this idea and take it as an ipr activity then what you need to do is you have to search this search is exactly like how you search for your uh, literature uh, how you search in your pubmed and other uh, index uh, this thing similarly for patent we have got the websites like patent scope and other media where you can actually search they also have a classification system for the patent search itself so uh, i it's beyond the scope because if i go into those details i may not be able to finish the session so those areas we need to search and if it is not there then you can go ahead with writing of your proposal this proposal writing you will be writing uh, what is your invention and what is the prior art that is existing and how does your invention is uh, different from the existing prior art and what are your claims as i told you the claims are the ones that are carrying the legal tag here not the entire proposal whatever points like you are going to tell that my handpiece will do 0.1234 
and these are not there elsewhere. So those four points are going to be your claims and that is the only thing that is going to be giving you the legal right. And once you have completed your proposal, you can file it in either national phase or in the international phase together or later also. And remember, you need not go for filing only after you get a working prototype. The moment you imagine a device, you are able to draw a diagram with little bit of uh, specification like this is how it is going to be that itself you can go and apply for patent file for the patent so that is called as the provisional specification if you are going to file it in that way within one year of time you have to submit your complete specification proposal so why do we uh, uh, why we should not delay submission of this provisional specification proposal because suppose a group of faculty members or a group of uh, people, including the students, are sitting and discussing in one room that this idea, we can easily convert it into an IPR activity. And you are also uh, started writing your proposal, how it can be done. If one of that person is going to file the patent at today evening, 4 o'clock, right? And you are going to submit the same uh, proposal for applying the patent at five o'clock, the person who submitted at four o'clock gets the right and your application will get canceled later. That is why how earlier you are filing the application matters. And don't worry about uh, the entire working prototype. You want to check it, you want to try it. All those things you can do later one after you file the patent. The moment you get that, file it and get the temporary number from the IP office and then you proceed with whatever else you want to do. And when applying for this process in the national in India, you can either apply through online or you can do through the uh, lawyers who are there for this, who are called as the patent attorneys. But only thing is the fee structure would be uh, very much high when you go through the patent attorney. But uh, the advantage by uh, of going through them is they will take care of writing the document, uh, I mean the legal document, which is required for the examination purpose, the uh, uh, hearing purpose in the court at the end, all those things will happen. And once we have filed this patent in the nation, uh, national office, what will happen? We, we have several forms for that. You will be submitting all those things. And here, this application can be filed by either the inventor themselves or the applicant can be a different person who are assigned by the inventors. What do I mean by this? For example, as an individual, I'm going to file a patent in my name. So I have invented and I am applying in my name. That is the applicant as well as the inventor are going to be the same. In other means, my institution has agreed to spend for the entire patent process. Uh, as I mentioned you earlier, the entire filing process itself has a lot of charges to be debited at each step. So if the institute has taken that responsibility of the, uh, it, it just wants you to be the inventor and it takes up the re entire responsibility of the financial thing. What they will take is, they will take an NOC from you and they will become the applicant. So in that time, you will remain as an inventor and the institute will become the uh, applicant. But don't worry because uh, once this uh, application is done, the application will have your name and the patent, uh, the abstract that is published in the patent office as a publication, IP office patent publication, that also will have the inventor's name. Only the grant certificate will have the applicant name alone. But there also, there is a provision where during application itself, you can request for your name in the patent grant certificate. Or if you want, and if your institution agrees, you can be a co-applicant. What the difference between your publication and the IPR process is, we don't have anything like who is the first author, who is the second author. All authors have the equal credibility. But in the proposal, when you're writing, they will be asking who will be sharing the profit if it gets commercialized. So in that area, you need to mention how much of percentage will go for each of the inventor that you have mentioned the name there or whatever is going for the applicant. So those things actually, uh, the template will be there in the proposal form itself. There itself, you will uh, declare who is going to get the profit once it gets commercialized. Okay, so I submit the application and what happens there is then we also have to apply for examination request and also for publication. 
See, just because we are going to submit the application in the patent office, they are not going to do anything with our application. Without us applying again for a request for publication and a request for examination. What is this publication? Uh, the IP office is, has its own journal. In that journal, uh, just like how our notary people will uh, uh, write, no, uh, if we are going for a spelling change in the birth certificate, usually many of you would have gone birth certificate when there is a spelling mistake or something, you want to say that this uh, person with this spelling and this spelling are the same. So that would be signed by the notary advocate. So what does he do? The first procedure he does is he, he will advertise that in the newspaper and there is a specific time to, until that which they will wait and get to know that there are no person opposing that and then only they will proceed with giving you that uh, notary certificate similarly what happens is once you submit the proposal the patent office will publish it to the public domain once it goes to the public domain it is for the uh, vision for everyone if they will wait for a, a particular period of time to know whether anybody from the public is going to tell no no i have such thing already with me this cannot be a valid patent. So you need to cancel this application. If anybody goes in that way, what they will do, they will not take the decision. Whatever existing prior art, they will also, the, uh, the patent office will also do a search. Either the public can approach them or they also will do a search. And if they find anything similar, they will send that notification to you. Like such a similar thing is there already existing. You give us a detailed explanation of how different is your innovation. So this is what is called is the first examination report, just like our FIR, first information report, this is called as a first examination report. So once you receive this first examination report, you have to analyze how uh, sometimes uh, that will be 99% match of the uh, thing, what they have given and what you had written. But you need to check the claims and check if the claims are not overlapping and provide justification of how yours is different. That is how it, uh, we need to defend it. And then that would be sent back to the patent office. Then that will be taken up by the committee. And finally, they will analyze. And if there are further queries, they will keep a hearing in the court. And after that, they will decide whether the patent can be granted or it can be, uh, or it needs to be rejected. So this is the process that happens at the level of the nation. Okay, why do I say that at the level of nation or international? Because this is a territory-based property. Like if you are going to apply and get a patent granted in India, it is valid only in India. It is not valid in US. So if you want to sell your product as a patented product in US, you have to apply in US. The one way there is, there is something called as a PCT application that is Patent Consortium Treaty. That Patent Consortium Treaty actually involves around uh, more than 150 contracting states in that several countries are involved. So you need to first pass on your application to that patent consortium treaty. And from there, they will actually publish it in the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, that is called as a patent scope. Their journal is called as the patent scope. And after that, they, uh, you are, uh, if they are okay with that, then it is like you are eligible to go and apply a patent in the any of the countries that come under the PCT. Remember, this PCT application is just like having a passport to travel outside India. It is not a visa. You have to get an individual visa for that particular uh, country in which you want to land up. So, land, uh, several, uh, similarly, if you want to sell your product in one particular uh, country because you know that the demand for this particular product is more there and you will be beneficial there, then once you have moved a PCT application, then with that application, you have to move on to that uh, individual country's application. So that is the process that is there. And finally, uh, about the commercialization, when can we start about the commercialization of this patent? You don't have to wait until your patent gets granted. You can very well start working on your uh, technology transfer or the commercialization part as soon as you get your acknowledgement from the IP office on your patent filing. Fine. So any queries related to this, this also I'll take at the end of the session. So one example I wanted to give you is the sequence here. So the idea and uh, prototype, whether you do or not, we have done this. Uh, well, I thought when amongst my patents, one is related to endo, that is dental pulpotomy and pulp capping simulator. We passed on and got uh, filed it and got the acknowledgement from there. 
and then it was published in the uh, patent office ip office publication in india and then uh, we also wrote it as a publication see this um, so this is uh, dr david with me uh, another professor in prosthodontics and this is dr pratima uh, hod of periodontics here actually she came up with this idea and uh, me and dr david are actually working in uh, several interdisciplinary uh, patents so that is how we landed here we actually have done with anesthesia general medicine and other departments so that's how we landed in periodontics also and uh, so uh, after this gets published we also started working on uh, uh, taking up to the next level of commercialization so now we are taking inputs from the people on about how uh, uh, the fidelity is there uh, anatomical fidelity functional fidelity all those things we are checking this is muthu sir and uh, one more period on this work checking the uh, prototype working prototype that we have devised so uh, yesterday dr sujeev sir was uh, asking a question like uh, what about if i had published earlier uh, the first point as i told in the patent uh, the thing itself is it should be novel the patent office considers that the novelty is lost when it is already published because once it is published it is already there for the public domain for free use after that they will not consider our um, application at all because if they get anything similar to the same uh, application what you had given then they will not consider so that is why if you have something uh, innovative in your hands don't present it in the conference don't publish it first file it in the ip office and then you proceed with the rest okay who are these great people any response jonas i, I think they are the inventors of uh, polio vaccine yes mama uh, they are the inventors of polio vaccine what they did was they did not patent that vaccine and they left it for the world to use because they said it's people's we cannot patent a son similarly we say that uh, this vaccine is for the but they had lot of difficulty because the when the clinical trial is going on for the manufacturing of uh, the vaccine everything they actually need lot of uh, support financial support that time the entire nation actually stepped into their efforts and they contributed money for the clinical trials to go on because it was a, a very big problem at one point in time just like what we have in covid right now and can anyone identify these people frederick banting mcloyd best and call it fine uh, they are the inventors of insulin actually uh, one by one they all joined and uh, finally they all came out with insulin the problem what uh, why i wanted to project these two is i was talking to you about the commercialization what happened is uh, sock and seven left it they didn't uh, monopolize their invention but these people monopolized their invention but with a good intention that it has to go to the public they sold their patent for 1 dollar a single dollar to the university of toronto after that what happened it was taken up by the pharmaceutical companies and today there are several, even though there are several modified forms of insulin there are n number of population who are devoid of this uh, insulin just because of the cost factor because the pharmaceutical industry took up an higher end so we need to decide whether we going we are going in for a commercialization or not depending upon how beneficial your product is going to be uh, nobody is going to take a say but if you want to uh, commercial if it is going to be a device and uh, it's not mandatory for the entire public to be used then you can always go in for commercialization that's why uh, then country can also even though the patent is uh, given to you granted for you any time the government can withdraw the patent and waive off it if it is in mass need for the entire uh, community so that can happen anytime that is why the issues of the covid vaccine patent also came in between so it is up to us to decide about the next step of the patent that is the commercialization okay the another type of uh, the intellectual property right is called as a copyright as i told you you cannot 
patent any of your novel treatment procedure or of that sort because they are uh, not patentable under the patent act but the advantage is you can make them as copyright uh, one difference i tell you the copyright is exactly similar to that of our publication your publication you are doing it in a uh, journal and you are giving a, when you sign the copyright form you would have seen some of the journals will be mentioning that the copyright will be remaining with the author themselves and some of the journals will be mentioning the entire copyright uh, has been taken by the journal for republication everything it is only their thing so it that is the difference between having the copyright in the ip office or you are going to put that literary document as a publication and anything that is artistic uh, you wish you have created that uh, that things also can go for the copyright cinematography like you have uh, done some procedure and you have recorded a video and that video you want that to be your intellectual property right then go for uh, copywriting of that video that can be done but once you put it in the youtube it goes to the public domain uh, there also they say that it belongs to you uh, the minimal copyrights are there but if you don't want other people people to use your video without your permission then you need to go for a copyright application and then any music or the sound recording and finally the software because all these things cannot be patented under the patent law so but these things can be copyrighted one difference is the patent is valid for 20 years from the date of filing of the application here the copyright is valid for you for the entire life and it is up to you but the commercialization potential is more in terms of your uh, uh, patent as far as the health sciences are concerned and copyright it has got very less unless you are very much uh, uh, sound enough to do that business and one example i wanted to show here is like uh, uh, i did this uh, uh, bds syllabus module to suit the choice based credit system i think the uh, forthcoming uh, curriculum that we are expecting has followed the cbca system this is a project in 2014-15 time and it went on for publication in two different uh, publications and it is also copyrighted and the copy was also submitted to dental council of india for consideration do you think if i haven't done this copyright and other things i have a documentation with me will i be able to even say it out that uh, i'm neither the member of the committee I'm not uh, anything to do with the uh, uh, curricular revision that is going on. Will I be able to even say this in a public domain that I have done this? So these are the proofs, actually. Whether you are going to use this rights and claim for anything, that is different, that we are not going to do. Because in academics, we are uh, having a pleasure that ours is getting into uh, seeing the light of the day itself is a great pleasure for us. So that is one notion. But if you want to make this also commercialized, then you can always do either. Well, the thing is, once it is copyrighted, either they need to acknowledge it with your permission and use it, or they need to uh, pay, uh, pay for it and then use it. That is how the copyright things can be done. But uh, commercialization of copyrights is far, far less than that of the patents. And one more thing uh, I wanted to tell to uh, Sarjeev, sir, uh, that time, this actually, this was the first copyright I filed in uh, 2017, I think. But before that, in 2016 itself, this uh, 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 publications were done. So when I ha had applied for this uh, copyright, I had to write to the JCT or editor and then get back my copyright from him. And then only I could apply. I actually attached that letter of uh, him giving an NOC for that to be used as a copyright. And then only I filed it. But this is easily uh, done for a copyright application in that year, actually, they agreed. But when it comes for a patent, nobody will agree for this sort of NOC uh, business. It actually becomes detrimental for filing a patent. So please have your IP uh, filed first and then go in for rest of the scholarly activities. Okay, the final one is about design and trademark. I showed you uh, the Coca-Cola bottle and the uh, Starbucks uh, logo. You know, the basic difference is, uh, I think it, uh, both of them shows a commercial value of which company or uh, that by uh, matter of a second, you're able to identify what it is. But uh, it's a small difference between design and trademark. Trademark is actually the name or the logo or like how we have this Cadbury. 
it's not only there in this chocolate in their other products also in their biscuits in their uh, the uh, drinking chocolate powder everywhere they'll be having this trademark so that that is the trademark it can be a name or a word or a logo or something that differentiates the other goods from their particular brand and a design is just the simple design of this bottle the visual appearance of how it is there it is not inclusive of what material the bottle is made what is it utilized for what is, what you are going to keep inside this those things are not included in the design paper it is just merely the visual appearance of how it is going to be there i think your clinic logo or your uh, your department logo if you have done anything uh, innovatively but where you have not used anything from the uh, google uh, the copy copyrighted images available in the google images then you can always go in for the uh, trademark and designs some of the equipments uh, devices if you want to go in for a design patent actually the design patents are easily granted than the other uh, uh, major the patent as such and one more thing is these designs and trademarks they have only a validity of 10 years if you want you can pay and get additional validity of five more years but for all sort of patents we have annual renewal fee fine so finally how are we going to implement these uh, in the pg curriculum you know uh, students are not motivated by themselves in a majority uh, percentage so we need to identify some strategies the best thing is i loved this t steeping model like earlier a successful practitioner is one who has several years of experience as a practitioner in that particular area but now it is not so now it is if you have the skills if you have the technology if you know the technology and if they trust you you become a successful practitioner so that is an important change that has happened recently that no longer it is a t steeping model and when we, we just have to tell the post graduates i uh, i do tell this to everyone i meet like when you go and buy a mobile phone or when you go and buy any product you are checking so many things inside that because you want that to be worthy enough for the money you are spending there you want that product to be uh, worthy enough like even if you go for a hotel see i am paying this much why are you providing uh, the only this quantity or why, why this taste is only how all these things we are raising questions but the students never ever raise questions like that when they come for education which is a major investment actually this is a lifetime lifelong investment they are doing here especially in post graduation and they should reap maximum benefits from this this they need to understand probably Uh, in every pg orientation session we need to tell them that you are doing you have done a great investment here and it is up to you to reap maximum benefits from here and then go so they should come behind us not us going behind them to get every work done and what will they say like because why i have mentioned about this uh, after post graduation what they can max uh, the major fields that they can go is either they can become an academician or a researcher or an entrepreneur or a consultant to the other clinics and of course a person can be all four also at a time but in all these things the patent comes in a common ground the intellectual property rights is a common ground for example i had one post graduate student who was passing a lot for doing a seminar uh, it's almost 9 uh, years back uh, he was uh, literally crying like she he told ma'am i will never ever go into academics i'll be going only for my um uh, clinical practice please don't ask me to do seminar i will do case and i'll show you proof but i told him the degree what you are taking this mds degree is authorizing you that you can you are also eligible for an academic institution if that is the case it is your responsibility to do this also and go so if if anybody is going to raise such thing this ipr is not restricted to any of the domains it is common ground for everyone because you need not be in academics to have your uh patents or copyrights and again in our revised promotion guidelines for from the dental council of india the category 1 or 15 points there is an optional thing where if you are if you are an owner of a patent that additional 15 points can be added it is up to uh, left up to the uh, inspector who has arrived at the point and uh, their willingness and when you go for when we are working in an institute always uh, and that's what i feel see dca is not demanding that many number of publications or research projects or anything from us but the university or the institution where we are working in actually demanding more than what the regulatory body is demanding because 
they have their own criteria for getting the national uh, ranking factor for getting the NAC accreditation and several other accreditation uh, things. But what happens is because this IPR has taken a great weightage in all these areas. So this also to be sensitized among the faculty as well as the students so that they also gear up to do this. So this is the 15 marks of 30 percentage weightage that comes in the NARF. And again, NAC has the, in the research and publication sector, they also have given uh, 10 marks weightage for this uh, patents and copyrights. Uh, they also have categories, number published, number uh, number filed, published, granted at several stages and technology transfer. So each one of it has got a different sort of a weightage. And anything novel, I'll tell you, please think of IPR because this is the current situation of India where the national education policy is also insisting on innovations and inventions. And the government of India is bringing out a lot of proposals to uh, encourage this IPR activity in all the uh, sectors. They have got this Make in India concept and also this Startup India where they can uh, even start small companies from the patent, uh, whatever they have done. And there are several schemes and funding calls that are available for manufacturing medical devices on other devices as well. So if you go into these websites, you'll be uh, getting more motivation to do something in this line. So I always end any of my session with this. Who dares to teach must never cease to learn. And if you want to be successful in career or in the life as a whole, we should be proactive. So I thank uh, extremely my uh, um, senior, Dr. Madhana and Dr. Mahalakshmi ma'am, the entire team of uh, SRM Dental College and uh, Indian Association of Conservative Industry for considering me as a speaker for this uh, extreme deputy session. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Over to you, Swadina. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm there, ma'am. Should I put the video, ma'am? Yeah, sure. Ma'am, thank you so much. I must congratulate you, Dr. Shiva Shakti. It was an excellent presentation. It's like, uh, I think it's very much needed. And uh, ma'am can relate that I'm doing the same. I'm in the same process. So I'm quite relatable uh, to the topic. And uh, definitely like uh, there are two parts of the, I would like to put two inputs ma'am actually. There are two parts to this particular topic. One like is academic and want you want to make an entrepreneurship. Yes. Uh, academics can't be entrepreneur, entrepreneur cannot be academics. To be in practical ground ma'am, which I'm going through. So yeah, initially exactly. we start initially we start as an academic because you know ma'am we see around people doing and we get into it. But slowly when we start learning the real groundwork, then you know that you have to give hundred percent. Then it has to completely entrepreneurship. Yes. So uh, so majority of our colleges in India are promoting like how ma'am like how Dr. Shivji said ki we are into patents, copyrights, and all that. So definitely like find out for ranking and we do need this. But I always say that uh, for the initially, we will all like publication. We started with Scopus and PubMed. But as you go more and more, you understand the value of it. You just don't do for other. You start doing it for yourself. Exactly. So point comes where you choose, which is more for you and more no, less for other people. Like that. And that's an excellent presentation. It's very good. Like every student could understand relatable what you said. And it's very nice. Thank you. And I think that PCT, uh, I have a question that PCT, which is a, it's a cooperation treaty, right? Patent cooperation treaty, right? Yeah, yeah. it is also called as patent consortium treaty, uh, wherein we move in the application for the international uh, events. Unfortunately, international, there is nothing as international uh, patent. It is patent for each country. So it is very difficult. Country. You have to choose the country and, you know, it's not like, International means all the countries are covered. That's the sad part, right? Yes, ma'am. But uh, what happens is and once we uh, apply it in the PCT and it gets published in the patent scope, that is their WIP, World Intellectual Property Organization Journal, the individual country, there will be people sitting and watching all these things okay. as a full-time profession. They will actually contact you. You apply in our country and you give your patent to us because this patent Either we can use it by ourselves or we can license, give the license to others to manufacture the product and also sell it. Okay. So what happens is uh, once we uh, once I applied my first patent as an initial patent, I received a mail from Cuba. 
so they wanted that thing to be uh, they invited me to apply in cuba so there are uh, there are separate professionals that are working full time there so that pct application we are moving it because it is going in for a wider audience then fact yeah. that's that's a good uh, i didn't know about this actually yes, we have applied one city the on, the only point problem is man the pct has to be within a one year of application the day you apply be very yeah. if you getting before the grant you have to apply within the year for the pct so that's a very quick call for anybody to file pct because pct that's come with a cost heavy cost so that's the only problem we don't know the commercial potential because we don't have the prototype so now, nowadays with the nac nrf and all that most universities actually take up your we have our university actually our uh, management we have uh, the same where they take up the cost of it okay that's very nice it, it goes for us also it is of, uh, in dent uh, is at dental point yeah because okay. it's very high 1 1.25 yes. lakhs yes right right for pct so it's a high cost that involves so we, we cannot do it as an individual unless you have an you know you know for sure that in entrep you get an entrepreneurship and you can earn that sort of a money back otherwise it's difficult you know because right. that will take at least 5 to 5 5 years or more to realize some some amount of from that right so uh okay and thank you so much um and uh, okay now we'll i think there is no more questions so thank you very much shiv shakti for that wonderful presentation very sincerely done i can see the uh the entire you know your whole uh, brain working in that direction so so nicely presented and thank, thank you. you swadina in spite of being